Hello, I'm Jay Beershank. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. You're joining me here for another edition of Book Reviews, and you're joining me in the upstairs of my house in uh, Mexico, San uh, Cristobal de las Casas in Chiapas. I'm uh, here for a month with my girlfriend, just working on some things and hanging out, taking a little break. Anyway, it's the first book review in Mexico, so that's exciting. I was here about six years ago, but it was before I was reviewing books, so now we're here. And just yesterday, I finished a great book. It's a book that has been referenced to me throughout my whole life, and a book I have tried to read several times, but could never get through the beginning because it was so dense, scientifically dense. And um, yeah, anyway, I'm glad that I was able to get through it because it really synthesized many ideas that I held in my mind. And I wouldn't say that they're completely synthesized, they're completely unraveled, but those ideas have some more pathways between them, which is something I'm grateful for. And so that book is, the Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton. Basically what this book is, is the bridge between cellular biology and quantum physics. Bruce Lipton is a cellular biologist. Um, that's what he was for the first 40, 50 years of his life. Then he discovered a magical part of the cell which changed his perception of everything. And that was this. Um, commonly believed and commonly taught in schools is that the brain of a cell is its nucleus. But it's been proven that if you remove the nucleus from a cell, then the cell can still survive. So theoretically, it can't be its brain. And then what Bruce now is postulating and what he proves and what he then bases his claims off of is that the brain of the cell is its membrane. The cell membrane is what is responsible for allowing information into the cell and out of the cell. And so basically, he says that the intelligence of a cell can be judged by the amount of IMPs, internal membrane proteins, on the cell membrane, because the job of the internal membrane proteins is allowing that information in and out. The more, the, the more proteins, the more information can be let in and out, because the more of those proteins can be acting simultaneously. And you can only fit a certain number of IMPs on a particular cell. So you could either expand the membrane or you can then have multiple cells, which then would be us and most living things on this planet, multicellular organisms. So that was really interesting. And then what he coupled with this is quantum physics. And so quickly, I guess the way that, again, I am not a quantum physicist, but then to couple our understanding of what a cell is and the fact that the intelligence and in the brain of a cell resides in its membranes and its IMPs and its ability to receive and act upon information because there's two types of IMPs that he focuses on and that is a basically a receptor IMP and an effector IMP. A receptor IMP is uh, an IMP that can observe information or stimuli in the environment and take it in to the cell. And then the effector protein is then the protein that acts upon that information. So then, you know, suggest some kind of physiological response in your body. So then when you then think about quantum physics, let me quickly explain what I learned from this book, but again, not a quantum physicist. Atoms are made up of subatomic particles. Subatomic particles are particles that are moving constantly. When you've heard of this idea that um, there is no real matter, everything is not solid, everything is moving energy, that's what quantum physics is. Quantum physics says that everything is made up of subatomic particles that are moving to the point where they become solid. So subatomic particles make up atoms and then atoms make up cells. So when these subatomic particles are moving, they're emitting a certain vibrational field because the movement is creating a field around that movement. So if you think of this as like my finger in water, ripples are coming out, you know? And so if you think of my finger as a huge uh, subatomic particle, and then this is like the ether of uh, the physical realm, then this subatomic particle is then creating a ripple, which is a vibration. So the vibration is being created, and then the way that the vibration is measured is through the understanding of frequencies. Now, I'm not going to even pretend for a second that I completely understand that, but I'm sure <clears throat> if you're watching this video or if you've watched other of my videos, 
then maybe you have heard of people talking about like higher frequencies and this sort of a thing. This book is definitely interesting because it can connect some interesting dots. And I wouldn't say that my dots are connected completely, but anyway, the measure of a vibration from a subatomic particle is called a frequency, okay? And now going back to these um, IMPs on the cell membrane. So the IMPs are receiving information, right, and acting upon it. So IMPs can receive uh, vibrational frequency information, okay? And so then we get into this whole kind of uh, idea where environment is the most important thing when it comes to healthy cells. Healthy cells, we can say, are healthy humans. And so this is a difficult idea because if subatomic particles are making up everything in the universe and they also make up the cells, then how is the vibration from the subatomic particles in the ether any different than the subatomic particles in the cell? And that's a whole other thing that I don't understand, but that's interesting to think about because it's really like they really are one. So everything really is one. So how are those two things having effects on each other, which is interesting to think about. But nevertheless, um, those are the uh, two main concepts here that I'm trying to get across this book is about. It's the cellular biology and the cell membrane. And then it's about the quantum physics and how the frequencies that are measured from the vibrations can affect that uh, information that is received by the cell membrane and then how the cell membrane then uh, receives the information and then how the effector proteins release certain information uh, back into your system that has physiological responses basically and so it's a really, really, really interesting book because I'm sure that, you know, you've heard people talk about positive thinking or you've heard people talking about choosing love or you've heard about people talking about don't give up on yourself or be confident or all these things. And so this book is really the hard science um, behind that all, you know, and I'm not going to one thing I felt like I didn't get from this book was um, there are people who talk about vibrations of emotions. Um, there's one guy, I think his name is Dan Winters, who I was looking at for a little bit. I'm not saying he's the uh, know-all on that, but Dan Winters, he talks about, I believe, he's the heart math guy. He talks about heart math. He talks about the frequencies of um, emotions like happiness and love. And so let's just take this theoretical concept that Dan Winters has about the frequency of certain emotions and now think about that in the quantum physics. So those uh, frequencies being emitted from those emotions would then have direct effect on cells that make up life, particularly our lives, human lives, how would those emotions, those frequencies, be received and affected upon by the cells? And so you can have, you know, there's ideas about uh, harmony. You can have uh, harmonious frequencies. So your cell is basically um, emitting the uh, same or a conducive frequency to the emotion and when those are in harmony then they multiply each other but then when they're in uh, disharmony or when they're dissonant frequencies then they can create disruption which could be seen as disease even now this is still my own kind of offshoot of these ideas but when you read the book you can think about it for yourself like that but that's kind of what i was getting and it you know he really pushes that all of this stuff <clears throat> is completely proven and understood in the medical and in the scientific communities. But there is such an emphasis on, um, basically, he called it neo-Darwinism, which is basically a view of, um, it is not looking at things on the whole. And when we start talking about quantum physics, then obviously we're talking about things on the whole. Because like I said earlier, if those subatomic particles are making up reality, and we are an aspect of reality. Now we really are like super meta, right? So we have to think of it as a whole. But the, Darw the Darwinian approach to, um, to all of this would be much more compartmentalizing things in the sense of like, um, well, I guess I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with that. But basically, when you don't think of it in a quantum way and you think of it as a sub-compartmentalized sub way, then if you have a disease or something like that, then you're going to focus on the particular cells that are being affected. 
and you're not going to think about how the environment is creating that uh, response. Because if there's something going on in the, those cells, then that means that the environment is giving it the information for the IMPs to receive and then act upon. So all, everything we see is a reflection of subatomic particles vibrating at a certain frequency, which is so crazy. But um, in, in his theory, in his theory. So basically, um, one of his biggest things is saying like, for one, pharmaceutical companies don't want that because pharmaceutical companies focus on one particular problem and they can fix, you know, like A equals B equals C instead of like C plus A plus B equals C equals B equals A minus A minus, you know, it's like all connected like that. So pharmaceutical companies have a big play um, in this book for what he claims is like the biggest impediment towards us understanding the medical uh, potential of this awareness and then also the scientific community's kind of dogmas around uh darwinism and genetic determinism and um yeah anyway i i keep getting stuck when i talk about darwinism because i realize that i'm ignorant to what actually darwin claims which is really bad and well not bad but i i'm aware of that and i'm claiming and i'm gonna say it that's why i have a hard time discussing that but um yeah so I would say, here we go, now I'm going to give my opinion on this because I really just tried to talk about what was going on in the book because I think it's really, 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 really important. But my personal opinion of this is that it's so easily proven to oneself that what you believe directly affects your reality, right? We are all seeing and perceiving our own realities because of the way that we interpret what is going on and what we think and what we see and what we know and what we believe and who we think we are and all those things are directly affecting what we create as this world and so you know i don't know exactly where i'm going with that but then to have the science that's backing that and to have this book be able to just begin to kind of reassure you with you don't even necessarily need to fully understand it i guess like most of the people that are going to watch this video are probably not going to go and become quantum physicists or go and become quantum physicists, cellular biologists, crazy experts. But the reassurance that choosing positivity and choosing truth and honesty and all of these things are going to play out better for your uh, reflected cellular environment is amazing. It's amazing. Um, I know that when I was younger, I definitely was so much more adamant on all these things. And um, I've really like, I really focused on, you know, choosing love and choosing connection and all of those things. And as I am getting older, I notice myself, you know, becoming so skeptical of what I believe and being so skeptical of what I think is right and so skeptical of how I think I should be in the world and all of those things, which I think is obviously normal. And I still accept that that's true, but a book like this is then such a nice kind of um, pat on the back to say like, no, you know, stay on the path, you know, and continue choosing the higher road and the road of connection and love and positivity because it is directly affecting the cellular expression that is being reflected to the environment from you and then being <laughs> bounced back from the environment to you and then in turn, making a more harmonious meta universe which is crazy but that's really what this book is claiming and quantum physics is crazy you know when you start to think about it a little bit and like after reading this book obviously i thought about it more and it's just it's insane and um you know then we then those are also a part in this book i thought was interesting was talked about um how the development of children starts you know well before they're in the womb it starts even when they you know it's a sperm and a man and an egg and a woman like because it's all life, right? It's all energy. So of course, directly when it's turned into that particular substance, it begins having a life of its own. So he talks about, you know, how he talks about conscious parenting and how to basically, you know, nurture uh, a healthy environment for the kid to come into. And he talks a lot about the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is also an amazing, amazing uh, thing to read and to learn about and think about how it affects our lives, you know? Uh, 95 percent of our um, actions is determined by our subconscious mind so the idea that we only 
know and understand 5% of what we say and do and think is just insane. Um, so there's a lot of, about that in this book too. But anyway, I'm getting way off as a long review now, but it's a beautiful book. And I think that the book deserves a longer review. And I hope that after watching this or even from watching a little bit, you feel a bit compelled to go check it out. I know that you'll be able to talk to some really interesting people about this book if you do read it. Um, most of the people who I have referred this book to me have been people who I love and respect very much. And um, I think this book will greatly improve your life because... It's one of those books that you read and you really realize how much, um, I don't want to say control because then it's like subconscious mindset, like, do you have control? But it's like how much your actions truly matter in the sense of um, creating a better, better reality for us all and for everything that is. <laughs> anyway, this ended up being quite the esoteric review and uh, that is what it is. It's a beautiful book and I hope you go check it out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, I would love to hear your guys' comments, you know, if it, even if it's just calling me out for being a stupid shirtless guy who doesn't know anything about uh, quantum physics up in his attic, that's cool too. Or if you want to give me your personal opinions of like some of your beliefs around all this stuff, we'd love to hear it. Anyway, that book is The Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, everybody. Peace.